Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, welcome to all. My name is Apoorva Mishra from Extra Marks Education, your facilitator for this particular session. It's my utmost pleasure to extend a warm welcome to each one of you to our esteemed webinar series, which is Extra Marks Elevate. Extra Marks Elevate stands as a beacon of thought leadership providing a platform for educators, administrator, and stakeholders to share their insights and experience in the realms of education and technology. With a rich legacy spanning over 15 years, Extra Marks has been at the forefront of revolutionizing education, catering to the dynamic needs of 21st century learners through innovative technological solutions in collaboration with over 15,000 schools globally. As we embark on the 17th episode of this esteemed series, we are privileged to host an esteemed panel of experts who will delve deep into the topic of rethinking student success beyond grades in the new academic year. So allow me to introduce our distinguished panelists for today's session. We have first Lena Nair, ma'am, principal from New Era School, Varodra, leads with a visionary approach, earning international recognition like Iconic Leader Award, Global Principal Award, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam International Education Educators Honor for outstanding contribution and achievement in the field of education. She prioritizes individual growth and professional learning through progressive teaching methods enriching the educational landscape locally and globally. Welcome, Lena Nair, ma'am. Thank you. Moving ahead, we have Abira Day, ma'am, principal Nava Nalanda Public School, Kolkata, with over 25 years of experience in teaching and administration, Ma'am has served various capacities such as headmistress, subject in charge, teacher across esteemed institutions, contributing significantly to curriculum development, extracurricular activities, and student mentorship. We welcome you, Ma'am, to our series <laughs> Extra Marks Elevate. Thank you so much. With that, oh, my... yes, ma'am. No, no, my voice is audible. Just so want... absolutely, absolutely. Oh. Continuing with the same, we have Veena Money, ma'am, academic director, Mega Group of Schools, Nagpur. With over 30 years of experience, ma'am is deeply driven by understanding education's role and the psyche of a child. Graduating from St. Joseph's Bangalore, she fiercely led schools as principal for 15 years, aiming to empower children in their education journey, fostering a love for learning. We welcome you, Veena, ma'am. My pleasure. Thank you. With this, we move ahead to Lee Thomas, ma'am, principal for Carmel Garden Public School, Coimbatore, a seasoned educator and principal adept at managing diverse administrative roles with ease, passionate about empowering faculty and ensuring continuous professional growth demonstrated through a track record of achievements spanning across 26 years, including conducting workshops, facilitating parenting sessions, and receiving commendation for academic excellence. We welcome you, ma'am, to our Extra Marks Elevate. Uh, ma'am, you are on mute. Yeah, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, no, not now, ma'am. Yes, now we can. Thank you, Thank you for your warm welcome, dear. Then we have Monica D'Souza, ma'am, 
principal SK Vidyashram CBSC school, Tenkashi, an esteemed educator and visionary leader with over 19 years of experience, including nine years as a dynamic school principal, re recognized for her academic excellence and commitment to educational innovation. She has received numerous prestigious awards like National Award for Excellence in Education for her outstanding contribution to the field. We welcome you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Last but not the least, we have with us Director, Extra Marks Education, Poonam Singh Jambal, ma'am who has always been believing in inclusive, intuitive, on and holistic tech-enabled learning solutions. We have been really happy and grateful to have with, her, have with us with Extramark since 2007. We welcome you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Apurva. Looking forward to the uh, conversation. And we are always learning. So as I can see, our panelists bring with them a wealth of experience and expertise in the field of education. And we are honored to have our entire today. I just noticed we have all women panelists. <laughs> so it's an honor. And from across the country. Absolutely, ma'am. So to share the insights with us today, as we step into the new academic year, it's time for us to rethink or to ponder upon what it means for students to succeed. Beyond just grades, we are exploring a broader view of success, one that includes personal growth, resilience, emotional intelligence. So today we'll be talking or discussing about this, unpacking how we can nurture a learning environment that empowers every student and help them to thrive in all aspects of their life. So without much ado, I would like to start this conversation posing first to Lena, ma'am. So ma'am, how do we define student success beyond academics in currently in your institution? How are we focusing that, ma'am? Ma'am, uh, your yeah, mic needs to be unmuted. Um, thank you for that uh, introduction and uh, uh, congrats to Extra Marks for going this far to get our views. You know, I mean, we are heard all over and we heard so many of them in the past. So thanks for that. So already you mentioned about the holistic aspect. So I would like to just add on to that, that what I look forward to as success among the students is we all know that grades do not matter much the academic grades because it is mainly you know cap it mainly captures you know the memory power or just it is just you know uh, you know uh, information gathering you know but i also do believe that you know we have to focus on the three main domains you know cognitive affective and psychomotor which you just mentioned you know this covers all aspects be it the brain the heart and the physical aspect so what we look into when we talk about the student success is that we, we want we want them to be you know able to be you know doing things you know uh, creatively uh, solving problems there being able to participate in activities you know all the mental faculties and faculties and the physical faculties to be very strong what we want them to be prepared is for the uh, for the career that will come across, you know, the work ethics, leadership skills, critical thinking skills, be able, being able to, you know, collaborate, communicate. So we want them to nurture these aspects, these skills in them. And only when they are able to present themselves with all these skills along with their academic grades, I believe that this would be the real success that we all look forward to. Mental and physical well-being, yes, of course, I mentioned about the effective domain. So according to me, the success is when uh, the students are able to portray well in all these three areas. And I, as a principal, I would definitely want to make sure that we provide all that is required in our school 
so that they are able to present all these aspects, you know, when they grow, as and when they grow. So that is what, according to me, is success. Thank you. So, uh, ma'am, you mentioned about four pointers over here. I'm sure we have a huge participant list with us right now. Yeah. Yeah. So we talked about critical thinking. We talked about collaboration. We also talked about communication. How do we instill this in the students? It's very important. Yeah. So how do we instill these qualities or these skills from the early age onwards? We give them opportunities to explore. We, we, you know, we have so many activities. It could be discussion. It could be interactive discussions. It could be recitation. It could be, you know, uh, project-based learning. It could be some days, it could be just, you know, having some uh, volleyball match, football match. When we look into the three aspects, we are going to give them opportunities as well. You know, it could be inter-house, inter-school, intra-school. So we just have to devise methods wherein they get a chance to show their skills in these areas. And of course, we have teachers who would help them to hone their skills, prepare, you know, for these aspects. And of course, we know that their learning styles are different. Their potentials are different. So we need to understand, like in the banks, we have KYC, know your customer. Like that, initial stages, we get to know them first and then we cater to their requirements and then we make them strong in these areas by giving them ample opportunities through various activities. We have to have a mechanism where we plan such activities wherein we are able to bring out all these aspects in them right from the beginning. Correct. So uh, adding up to the same point, I like to go to uh, Veena ma'am over here. So ma'am mentioned that we have to have different activities or it also starts drilling down from the teachers of how they are conducting into the classes, right? Uh, that brings me that what principles guide fair and inclusive assessment, right? Now we are talking a lot about this. So fair and inclusive assessments, when we are doing this, what are the different methods, ma'am, uh, which you can emphasize in your approach? Veena or Lena? Veena, ma'am. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Thank you for the wonderful question. So, it's all about assessments. So, we always believe that, you know, our focus is more on assessments and grades, right from parents, our stakeholders, everybody's all the time looking at the mark sheets. And we are very worried about keeping records and maintenance and judge you know we get judgmental also based on the assessments uh, without looking at what is happening like uh, what is the child's strength like k by c uh, lena ma'am was saying just now uh, without knowing what, what, what are, you know we expect know. children to do, do well, well in whatever we want all the subjects all the, subjects, the areas that we want to not thinking of alternative methods so assessment has been there all the time when we come to assessments. Um, I would like to share, you know, how uh, during our Gurukul times, what was assessment like, how practical and hands on uh, interesting assessments. So this guru had completed a teaching to his set of disciples, you know, they would go and live with him uh, in the jungle somewhere. And uh, he had completed that. And then he wanted to test his children, how they had, uh, whether they had understood the Bhagavad Gita and the Upanishad and whatever, blah, blah. <laughs> and uh, so he gave them all, he calls them and gives them all one banana each and says, you all have to eat this, uh, hiding yourself somewhere so that nobody else sees you. So they all, okay, go away and they hide, climb a tree behind the bush here and there they hide and eat and, and they all assemble back after an hour. And this one student is still holding the banana and he stands. So the guru says, why is it you don't like eating a banana? What happened, child? And he says, no, there's no place where I can hide from God. And uh, so he had understood the gist of, you know, all of these scriptures. And how practical and, you know, how we apply. So here, basically in the Gurukul system also, the test was on application, real life situation. And all these things come from, now we talk about competency-based assessment. Everything is competency-based and how competent, yeah, is this assessment is absolutely competency-based. No wonder we had great mathematicians and scientists those, those times in India. So what we need to look at is we assess children every day. Okay, it's part of teaching learning process. It's not away apart from the teaching learning process. So assessing children is part of teaching learning process. How do we assess children? The child might not be able to write. 
but the child speaks inside the classroom. Like ma'am said just now, critical thinking. I was inside a KG2 classroom and the teacher was doing a revision of 100, 100, 1, 102, when do we call a full list and what number do you use to call the fire engine? And she was asking, uh, she was saying, there's a thief in my house and I have to call police. So what number do I dial? So children say, yeah, we call police and 100. And then she said, okay, now I have to go to the hospital. So whom do I call? And one child suddenly stands up and says, Ganesh ji. And they all laughed and why Ganesh ji? Ma'am, if Ganesh ji comes, you don't need police, you don't need fire engine, you don't need an ambulance, you don't need anybody. You know, critical thinking happens. We have to understand that, okay, this child cannot really communicate in English very well and he doesn't write very quickly, but he's great in thinking. And we'll have to create platforms and opportunities and write down anecdotes. Okay, very important. Maintain an anecdotal record and write down that this thinking has happened in this class. And maybe the child does not really do very, does not answer all the questions on the day the assessment paper is given or sheet is given for whatever reasons. But then we know that this child is great at thinking and he gets graded on critical thinking, uh, A+. plus. Um, so assessment will have to be part of the teaching learning process and anecdotes help us in grading children. Now, apart from that, definitely there are a lot of other ways of uh, assessing like formative assessments and summative. Okay, the 80 marks paper, we cannot escape. Children have to appear in 10 standards. So we begin preparing children grade one onwards to write papers, sit for one hour class and we let them write. But then there are children who don't like to write, who are impatient. And now children are very different. They're all coming with different kinds of chips in their heads. They're tech savvy, but they wouldn't want to write, sit for so long. They get impatient. So we have so many ways of checking them, like project-based learning, ma'am said just now. So we assess children when they create something and they present. And we see how they communicate, how is their thinking, their understanding through the project itself. We don't have to wait for this summative written paper. And though our focus is on the 10 standard score, uh, but then, you know, now there are maybe by the time these kids come to grade 10, it would have changed. We'll be living in another world also. So we don't really need to focus on that so early. There are oral exams, keep asking questions. And there are, you can do an art integrated exam. You want to check fractions, equivalent fractions, give a mandala. Uh, painting and then ask them ki half of the mandala has to be read and a quarter has to be this and or integrate technology yeah uh, so many lovely questions we can create with technology using technology and there are so many ways of uh, assessing children so we need to basically yeah like kyc again understand there are these children who love art and painting and color so uh, you know we assess in so many different ways like we had been doing earlier with the cce Assess in so many different ways during the teaching learning process that every child has performed somewhere or the other. Create an opportunity for each one of them based on their intelligences, MIs. Uh, can yes, I can I add on one point to this? Yeah, yes, yes. please, ma'am. So again, uh, just adding on to what Madam said, that uh, here also, like like what Madam said, we believe in developmental assessment, you know, and we have to follow the Bloom's taxonomy in any case, everywhere. So we have to uh, touch upon the cognitive levels right from the remembering to the creating part. So you are applying, analyzing. So we have to test all these areas while assessing, regardless of the method that you choose. What Madam has given so many methods, that is that you can apply, but we have to keep in mind all these levels of cognitive levels as well. So that, you know, they're able to create. What we want towards the end is, being able to create something that would help them in future. Yeah, absolutely correct, ma'am. We have uh, Chandran sir also joining us from Navbharat National School, Coimbatore. We welcome you, sir, to our mm -hmm. extra marks elevate. Good evening, so, everyone, uh, dear educators. Uh, first of all, I thank our uh, extra marks, uh, especially they were guiding us for the uh, past three years. And uh, really, I had a good results from extra marks from the lower class. And uh, uh, grade 10 and 12, we got a very good results uh, because of this extra marks. Uh, your provision like uh, objective questions and uh, other subjective questions, right? So I thank once again. Uh, so I'm, I'm a little proud of uh, being in this panel. 
and this is the first time for me uh, with the um, great educators and principals and uh, director from extra marks thank you thank you once again i can i pick the tail of what he just said maybe yes, yes, please go <laughs> to me uh, for the longest time assessment is not a testing tool it is a learning tool for the longest longest time and then when we leverage test to the platform our first thing was can we create a mcq which uh, helps a child self test also and uh, moment you get a result you should also get a result wherein the child clicks on that whatever answer is given whether it is right or wrong and whatever the level of the answer what is the right answer and what is the concept behind it because end of the day test is a measure to identify gaps and if you get timely intervention rather than him waiting to meet the teacher the next day or have break, you know that fearlessness to ask the question inadvertently we gather the um, learning gaps that's why from a young child when they are brave to ask why and when we become adults and we stop asking is when the gap widens mm. so sometimes i feel at a cognitive level that lena uh, mam was talking about um, foundation should be self driven once you explain the concept through application or case study the way you was if through exper experiential manner you should let the child go explore the concept play replay till you know that base is set and because by using technology the time the teacher spends to creating the uh, assessment that is taken away and she can focus on all the activities you're talking about that leads up to creating bingo ma'am you have taken yes. away the sixth question that um, was put up how do you leverage uh, yeah. technology so yeah. we had all these points with us yeah fantastic they'll get reiterated see yes, yes. all of you are but but uh, so so yeah can i uh, uh, add so, something so like that like, yes yes yeah assessment yeah. also see, uh, instead of assessment, checking checking yes, children yeah. it is also to check it's a yardstick for us to understand how yeah. well we have taught absolutely okay. an assessment is meant for the teacher to know where we stand and what else do we need to do what so, changes so, uh, we need to make yeah. if some children yeah veena so, ji uh, to that only just yeah. just to add a little when we begin we created a framework called learn practice test but exactly. over the period of time we realized it was such a lovely diagnostic tool for the teacher so we yes. have embedded that as a part of the framework diagnostic test then learn practice test and evaluate yes ma'am yes. we have seen that and i said that you know developmental assessment where you know you start with the formative assessments the mcqs and then go on to move on to the summative ones there so what happens with this technology when we use this i did yeah. that extra marks pro ka assessment now during revision last entire month i did that with the children here across schools mm. actually the and assessment can be technology one day to a child technology yeah. children children don't get scared they love to do it it's yeah. it's you know something nice they feel like they're playing and they like clicking yeah, on it's almost like a quiz game or something like writing yes yes uh, okay. and we are working on early brain development limbic system at those ages where we need to look at is the child picking up on courage and confidence and you know not demoralize children so yeah. so assessments have to take care of that too it not is also the self esteem the way you're saying yes. lot yes. of times in the class uh, child who's uh, constantly underconfident will yes. never ask a question and yes. his underconfidence yes. will grow imagine yes. that child in his privacy goes and looks it up and yes. comes back confident into the class Excellent. very right such a good point yeah. i uh, shall i add one yes. point yes please uh, ma'am like in primary i have seen that uh, this uh, building to be used for that once bala of that one we say 
okay and it helped the children also to learn the things very nicely like on the stairs we have written the formulas and also whenever they are climbing this wall the formulas are in their mind so they're not and see the assessment cannot be done in one day it's very difficult and we have 30 40 students in the classrooms okay so i prefer that if the teachers what ma'am was just saying that first you teach the chapter and make it a very interesting if the given that opportunity has to be given to the child that you research the thing and if you start integrating the things with the other subjects, you will see the subjects are becoming very interesting to them. And when we say, okay, with from the one paragraph, you may frame the questions, try to frame the questions on MCQ. See, the child is getting interest and you can assess them that how the child is understanding and why when they're framing the questions and what actually it was in earlier, the teacher used to frame the questions and we have to answer it. So instead of that, if we give in that way, you can also assess a child that if a child assessment is proper, then the question they are making from the topics will be also very nice and it will help the kids because it will be of their level also. It, and, it, uh, you know, Abhira ji, you just yeah. now, it's so uncanny. I was in a in an internal training day before and in that I said this, just on instinct, I said, it feels so good for you to say that because I told them, imagine if you want the child to wake up in the classroom, usually teachers say, ghar se padh ki aana. okay? And anyway, they are not going to open the book. But when you send a module, they will open the book. And how do you make sure they'll open the book? If the teacher says, I'm going to take a test tomorrow. So that's what my audience told me. I yeah. said, no, oh, if you told them you are going to take teacher's test tomorrow, yes. everybody will read. Everybody that's will frame a question. And yes. you will know they're excited. Their windows are open and they are also framing. So their comprehension is also tested. So such a fantastic idea. It's the same tool, but you can use it so differently. Yeah. And another thing I have seen that when I uh, was in the teaching line, I used to take the children for MUN and all. Okay. And when they had the global this discussions and all, the child who never used to read inside the classroom and all, I found that the child was so much interested in all those discussions and all. And now the child is, uh, means has done MBA and is in a very good position. So these things are the basic, I means to me, these are the basic tools to assess a child. And uh, if we go on telling that you mug up the things that you have to do, then what was the earlier system of education? So now who were the first, uh, you can say that who were assessed as the bright child in the class who became first, second, you will find nowhere nowadays. <laughs> but a child who was a good debater, who was a good player, you will see that they are shining because the assessment process which we had earlier, I don't find that assessment is very good judgment and technology is the best way because after the COVID, we have seen like extra marks as different tools to make the students understand, isn't it? The things are very simple because every child is not that learning. They can audio visual that helps them to also understand. So those things are very, very important nowadays to assess a child instead of using the book as a tool and only the same way. I cannot say that the success of the students will be to get the marks and to be a first boy inside the class. When you go the leadership qualities, you can handle the practical things in your life. That is the success of a student, I can. So, so that is a big difference between a syllabus and a curriculum. Yeah. The power of curriculum is in your hand. And it is not the answers you're checking, okay. but the questions you're going to ask. So all the school leaders today have to flip that. What and, Yes, exactly. Ask. That flip the means we have to do it. The leader of the school have to take that curriculum and see time to time that what actually it's going inside the classrooms and all. It's very important. In so, fact, the uh, shift is from... The shift is from assessing 
skills, not content anymore. Earlier, it was assessing on content. We were checking how much somebody knows. Yes. So when you're checking on skills, there are variety of ways of checking skills. Yeah. Yes, Monica, ma'am, please. Uh, yes. When we say that we want to uh, check the success, we need to know what is the definition of success. So we just evaluate child on the basis of academics. I think as all of us spoke and adding to that, the just the other day one uh, incident was there, I think on February 23rd, 2024, that one IIT, IIM 25 year old graduate dies by suicide. The police said that it was due to work pressure. He jumped from the ninth floor of the apartment and he died. So um, he was IIT graduate, IIM, what happened to him? So there are so many um, loopholes in our education system. And now, um, thanks to the, I mean, the understanding of the educators and the parents are becoming educated. So there are many ways in which people are ch think, uh, changing their thinking. So I was just asking my students, how many of them know chat GPT? And they said, most of them, and they have downloaded and they are getting all the answers from there. So it's not that we are no longer, uh, I mean, what we uh, thought, only the academic success by marks is not a uh, measuring tool for the students. They can get it by private coaching, out, outside schooling, like uh, some other institutions. They did not come to school. So, um, and, and also uh, in CBSC, we say now, uh, life skills should be evaluated life skills. So uh, self-awareness, empathy, critical thinking, according to WHO, World Health Organization, decision making, effective communication, interpersonal personal relationships, creative thinking, coping with emotions. Uh, even small kids nowadays, they get very um, disturbed. They say, uh, uh, I, I'm tensed. I'm tortured. They use many words without knowing the meaning of those. Mm -hmm. So coping with the stress is another thing. And we need to teach our children assertiveness. So based on all these things, we need to evaluate our children. There are 10 points. For those who are listening, you can go to the <laughs> chat GPT or you can go to website and you can see there are 10 life skills uh, um, I mean, there are many life skills, but uh, the World Health Organization tells in school, we need to inculcate these 10 uh, health, uh, life skills. So that the children... Monica, ma'am, I have a question. These skills, couldn't it be and shouldn't it be embedded in your uh, academic content? Yes, yes. That is what that is what we are doing. We, we are supposed to do and we need to do. That is the need of the hour because just teaching is not uh, uh -huh. it is it is not the work of the teacher because I as I told you in America one of the studies shows that in USA 89% of the students admitted that they are using chart GPT okay and higher education uh, leaders they said 67% of them reported using generative AI for their work in the past year last year yeah. okay for so future thinking higher education leaders, the next few years should be focused on how uh, thoroughly integrate all these things in our curriculum. Lily, Pam, what, what do you think about yeah, yeah. this? I think the curriculum itself is uh, say, talking about this integrated skills that has to be developed. In yes. Probably if you look into all the activities what we plan, right from the assembly, the school assembly and the competitions and the activities, club activities, we are not focusing on only on the learning from the textbook. All activities such what we plan, they bring out the skills and their creative thinking. As Sam was talking about this critical thinking, you give an opportunity, you give an experience, let the child think on its own or her own and come out with the solution. There you cannot define and say this is only the right answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, and it goes to this uh, example of alternative assessment. 
pardon ma'am uh, just a minute see yeah. the, when you set goals and objectives normally when a teacher goes into a uh, classroom with 40 minutes she is not only going to teach the content what she is prepared mm -hmm. along with that she has some objectives and goals where she focuses on the holistic development so that happening and you don't have to say that it is an assessment or it is a learning happening there all that app opportunities that you provide there itself will tell you that the child learns something and from that you want to know the learning outcome and the child is able to apply that as ma'am was telling vina ma'am like no you can call an uh, one not one for an uh, emergency uh, when you are hit with uh, some accident or you call the 100 for a police that is the applying knowledge So what I personally feel is assessment tools or the assessment activities that we define is based on the objectives what we set for our own. It cannot apply for all the children in the school. Each teacher should know their child better and plan accordingly. Then we can find out the learning outcome. If there is a learning outcome is really happening and the result is fine, then you can prove yourself. Yes, you have taken it into the classroom what you really wanted to. what do you say ma'am don't so, so ulti ultimately what what i understand is yes, the your uh, core curriculum uh, syllabus remains the same how exactly. you apply it in the classroom is going to change the, then the biggest thing that is going to change is the questions you're going to ask yes, exactly. are you going to ask from where does the sun rise or you're going to say by the rising of the sun what happens to earth exactly. it is as simple as that it is because i think today all the knowledge all of us uh, studied yeah. in yeah. 60 years is encapsulated like a calculator took away a need to add but moved us to application sums in the mathematics like that basic knowledge is available whether chat gpt wikipedia or whatever but its application is what is required ultimately in the classroom and interestingly all the 20 skills you're talking about ma'am if it is seamlessly embedded in the chapter itself in the process of teaching the chapter itself it will add so many layers to what we are doing in the classroom yeah consciously we need to add them yeah 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 better we need to check for the learning out outcomes as lily ma'am said uh, experiential learning outcomes because there are uh, different type types of learners yeah. according to the like, like uh, multiple intelligence so we need to tailor our so um, so what happens is you uh, uh, every time a school decides that this is where it wants to go it depends on the leader your staff translation of your idea your lesson plan how it is structured so uh, sometimes using frameworks of technology to make that this is my curriculum and this is how i'm going to drive you can act at least measure it through the year which manually sometimes gets very difficult to monitor so i i think that uh, helps but we also have to as adults change our mindset that it's not fashionable to bring these things but this is no, this can be normal gradually. it can happen gradually as you well said the leader should be very clear about what has to happen yeah yeah Uh, facilitated to the uh, leaders i mean uh, to the teachers who are with them the team whom she yeah. so there is where we are really successful and then we can bring out the learning outcome see the assessment tools will help us for that we are going to have various type of tools it's not only that the tools and telling the technology or looking into their welfare and bringing them uh, into the holistic let's say they 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 don't have to fear for anything once they are confident they know that yes i can manage any situation there they are able to come back or analyze their problems they are facing they are able to open up to somebody so all this matters so we need to look into all that so the leader whoever is taking up that responsibility should be very clear with the vision and the idea what she really want to be executed he or she wants to execute and train and orient the team whom she or he is traveling with and there i think they will seem the success face the success
yeah so, so uh, yeah please ma'am yeah so whatever you know i mean i mean you both were uh, what are points that you put forth it's very true you know so what i believe and what i um, what i put forth is you know it has to be both the, the teaching learning process and the assessment it has to be dynamic appealing and fostering motivation you know keeping the students engaged both while learning also and while appearing for any kind of test uh chandran sir we have this like uh, two teachers yeah. in a class right like um in some of the schools they have a teacher and a assistant to teacher the teacher teaches the subject course subject and the assistant teacher the assistant teacher helps in assessing the students from morning till evening given the behavior the life skills and other things. so it is not possible but still we can keep a portfolio every day we have started with our kg to standard students others we do in a uh, once a week so parents are happy with that when they come to meet the teachers um, they they write on that your the child was sad that day so she went and met the counselor this was the thing so uh, they are happy with uh, expressing their emotions and, so and also do, i like the word um, veena ma'am use anecdotes you don't tell his child is uh, bright or has critical thinking you just relate a story yeah. to a parent it makes it very personal yes uh, in so they are very happy with that when we tell your child is good in this good in other than academics mm -hmm. so we show them the academic result later we tell them all these first so they are happy with this that. this works very nicely because if a child is good in uh, uh football or something and if we tell the uh, parents uh, that confidence the parents also gets yeah my child is not good in studies but he is good in the school is appreciating that one and really that success uh, helps us uh, means to get the success to a kid also because we have seen the quota students and all they where they do not want to go for the because the parents want the child to be a doctor or engineer actually the child does not want child to want to be uh, uh related with the writing and all those so parents counseling is very important in this that actually why we are doing this that rethink um, can i add a fun point along with this please, my personal, please. personal experience in my school my kindergarten we think that how the child is doing good in the practical field my children are gone for kindergarten holidays their exams assessments exams are all over and on the last day we had just a small beat, like a, a chat with them and we told see you are all going for holidays now no watching tv no playing in the mobile what you should do is you should wake up and ask mummy and daddy what help we can do and you won't believe the next day the parents started calling up Our parents started calling up and telling, "Ma'am, my daughter is coming and asking me KG one and KG two. Mama, how can I help you? My teacher told that I have to tell. Here the child learns something, so the learning outcome is fulfilled." So I personally, hello. Yes, yes, ma'am, we can hear you. So I was really happy about that. See, something we are instilling in them the feeling to be caring, to be empathetic, to have concern for their parents. so children are able to take what they learned not from the books something been told and they are putting it into practice But, and ma'am you realize your power that's what <laughs> I, mean. i really feel very happy about it you won't believe ma'am my parents come with the mobile speaking on the two wheeler and i observe and i call the child and tell my dear uh, i call everyone by name so i called fahad your dad comes on the two wheeler speaking over the mobile to so please tell daddy that it is not fair to do that you, next he went and told and from then on the parent doesn't do that he comes up and then i told my daddy listen to me so there what learning happens when teaching happens. i was really very happy for this situation i thought this would be a, a, a fine time to share with you all oh, it's it's also another thing lot of times when leaders like you want to bring change impact and they hear a lot of protests from the parents and sometimes you give up that transition which you know is imperative but this incident should tell you that you do have the power to do it and you should not in your role ever step back if you think it is for the good 
very true. That's very very important. I would say. Yeah. So very important point which Lily Ma'am highlighted over here is the role of parents, the role of students, and of course the teachers. So Chandran sir, my question goes to you: How do we engage? uh different stakeholders in discussion about student success now right now we are talking about different uh, skill sets which are required as different okay. different organization supports but for a parent at the end of the day where they come across as ma'am mentioned that i told the student to go back and speak to the father so how do we engage with the different stakeholders in the success of a student's journey chandran sir Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I don't know how many of uh, our uh, principals began uh, from the residential school sector, and here one stakeholder is missing. Um, our parents. Usually, day scholars will have uh, the pa parents and uh, teachers, including management and others. But uh, since our school is a residential setup. Our students will be uh, seeing their parents once in a month. So whatever happens, we uh, inform parents regarding other activities, uh, but not academic frequently. Once once a month, the parents will visit the school. So here stakeholders, the parents will come us come to the school and uh, uh, talk to the students while they check all their books. And their activity activities and all all other activities in the academic the skill development area. So we call parents, especially to assess their academic skills. We have a pro system assessment like uh, each weekly test and uh, monthly test. I'm talking about uh, different types of tests we have. Individual question papers and questions will be assessed from each and every student. Finally, we have a um, a set of like how many students went wrong in a particular area in the uh, subject such that we will identify among the children. And again, we will be reteaching the concept, and uh, we have that success in our uh, school system so that they are very good in the. In their academic, and we have a, a strong belief in that, like integrated teaching, integrated teaching with mathematics, science, and how we take these uh, science, even social science, and how the important concepts in maths and science taken through languages. So that is the system we have very strong. We believe in it. So I am be very specific. How mathematics and here integrated. The sound is not clear. Uh, the sound is not very clear, sir. It is. It, I missed your last bit. Uh, Abira, ma'am and Lily, ma'am, requesting you if you can please put mic on mute, ma'am. Yes. yes. Just mute your mic. Ah. Uh, Abhira ma'am, I believe you have joined from two devices. That's why this echo sound is. Thank you, ma'am. Chandran, sir? Yes, yes. Yes, and, able uh, to hear clearly, sir. Uh, we have like uh, two types of stakeholders. Uh, internally, we uh, start the discussion about uh, skill development and assessment from the administrator, right? We have our higher authority, even they also involve in the discussion of student skill and academic development. And apart from that, since uh, our school is residential, we call parents once uh, in a month only. Otherwise, uh, these academic and other skill area development will be noted and appreciated, motivated only by uh, uh, administrators and uh, teachers and uh, like supporting staff also and school board and local uh, uh, we say second parties who come to school for uh, other uh, skill area like uh, uh, communicative English, other abacus, and mm -hmm. all these extra teachers also will be sitting for the discussion in their academic and uh, skill development. 
and uh, we call some government officials also sometime for inspection how we run uh, like local representative and corporations and general public also right because we have smc so from there we people will be called for discussion so those also will be coming under stakeholders right and uh, we have a strong practice as i as i want to continue this integrated and collaborative learning so we have uh, two types of lesson plan where the first main lesson plan will give us, give us an idea how one subject content will be taken to the other subject that is the first lesson plan and we have the second lesson plan following to the following the first one what specific objective objective we teach so the first lesson plan uh, we ask teacher to integrate the subject mainly science social science and mathematics now i am be specific like uh, how to find out a volume of a cube so this is one activity given to the student where that cubical box should be prepared by the students that is hands on activity by the student so there is a very simple way for example uh, uh, a cake box shall be opened and their outline should be drawn and from the outline where the folding should be made and finally the student is able to make a box and measuring each and every corner so this is hands on activity and it shows uh, what a scientific background of the uh, cube and the measuring from each corner to the other one right by measuring and finally the students will be able to find out the volume of the cube this is how we integrate our lesson plan right and in science even mathematics where the student feel very difficult to understand the concept principles in a particular uh, paragraph or particular uh, page right that content will be given as comprehensive passage that is unseen passage to under the english or uh, hindi or even tamil right so the student will be taking the same concept in languages and science as well as uh, the specific subject social science so this is how we believe so we we have many successful students who are very good using these scientific tools and integrating and collaborating one to the other one so one of the things which really uh, got me into this idea is whenever we are teaching i just take an example of earth right so you mentioned that we are all bringing all the subjects in one topic right so if i am talking yes. about earth i will also discuss earth in maths right yes. i'll also discuss earth in social studies i'll also discuss earth in science so that whatever for that particular week we can do or for that one particular day so whenever a student is highlighting he knows that oh this i can use it in maths also the same thing i have in science the similar way i have it in my social studies also you also highlighted one very important point over here sir which is hands on experience It's... that how do you get them to experience a lot of learners are there kinesthetic learners we talk about who love to experiment and they love to get challenged yes, they will yes, be yes. very happy to see that oh i somebody is questioning me about it so my question is to lena ma'am here so mm. ma'am why prioritizing hands on experience or hands on learning how first it helps them and how is it enhancing their understanding for a longer period of time uh ma'am your mic is on mute yeah so already i had mentioned about uh, active engagement is what we are looking at right now if we want to keep them engaged we have to ha give them some you know constructive work and that is where hands on learning experience comes in we have to devise activities which could foster their deeper understanding of a concept if you want to teach them about friction rough and smooth surface you have to actually create that in the class and make them do it you know like we have this you know umbrella 
they had made it you know you know we have the umbrella it's made up of either you know a material of plastic or maybe polythene or whatever but how why can't we use uh, say cotton or uh, paper there so they actually made those umbrellas in the class and they poured water on that to see what happens you know so this is where the understanding becomes deeper and retention of knowledge they remember this when they do it when they see it they remember also very well and that you know registers in their mind assessment also happens you know when they perform this experiments there and they when they do something hands on they are using their multiple senses it could be touch sight taste and smell sometimes but they are using all of their senses you know in doing a particular activity and of course while doing all this when we do this way creativity is bound to come innovation is bound to happen and the child will look forward to these classes in future and if the child does well something goes wrong he gets that motivation intrinsic motivation that okay i must try once again and that would keep on repeating and the definitely the performance you know it would improve that is how i would look into it and now it is called as experiential learning because experiential is when your hands on learning along with that when you reflect it becomes experiential so after learning a particular activity doing a particular activity then the children reflect on that they jot down their observations they discuss on that and then it becomes experiential for them so that and is how also, i look at it uh, one more right one more previously whenever there were experiments or projects you would study the concept and go and do the project now it is actually turned on its head for deeper learning once you have experienced it and then you go and visit the concept you immediately understand it and understand it in a uh, perspective that you can also answer yes questions that challenge you not the question based on the definition but the application of the definition the long term learning there long yeah 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 learning. yeah, yeah. earlier earlier an activity was a dessert now it's yeah. part of the meal it is part of the meal and that's Thank the you. bottom line so that's why okay. integrated learning the way um, um sir was talking about of going cross subjects is something very interesting because that's what we are we are some total of every science right and then we <clears throat> split it for deeper understanding but if we context contextualize it to the child he will always take it in the inner circle of learning there are concentric circles of learning you you know that uh, i have great potential for language but i don't have potential for science but if you're studying sky starting from language into science my entering without fear into science becomes greater and if you are intrinsically good in science and you move into language that way your fear doesn't stop you yeah. and when we compartmentalize things we can't play this interplay of it and the child enters these domains you know unknowingly you know unknowingly not knowing that you know yeah. it's math it's science it's geography so so i end into the, it uh, day ma'am uh, the i'm just uh, giving you one quick example the all this for the last 50 years of us um getting into education as students or trainers or whatever we wish for these things if you see a very beautiful thing whatever we wish for in the classroom is kind of coming together in terms of uh, the evolved teachers and students the po evolved policy and the edtech what yeah. they have created as tools and somehow within that 40 minutes we are we are able to reach what we wished for and i just wanted to add one thing on the uh, stakeholders you know involvement okay if i can just one point there yeah, yeah, that you know uh, we have we are going to the hpc change now the holistic progress report card is going to come 
already there in place for foundational stage. NCRT has given for other stages as well. CBSC will come up for other stages also. So one thing what we do, what we all should do, I feel is that we have our open house every three months, every two months, whatsoever. But every month we do give a feedback form to the parents wherein, you know, we give a checklist. My, my child was happy doing science or not so happy doing whatever subjects. They may pick up there and, you know, write two, three lines over there for us to understand that what which are the areas where we need to concentrate or we need to focus regarding that particular child. So this also helps for the student's success. You know what is good about these um, chats that we have here? I To me, as an onlooker, I see the leaders that we have today are listening. Very fact, you're asking for a feedback. You're trying to evolve. That is a huge leap of faith towards, you know, enhancing the whole system itself. Exactly, exactly. If you're doing well, you shouldn't be scared of getting a feedback. Uh, I believe Lily, ma'am. Yes. I just want to congratulate Lena, ma'am. And I want to tell ma'am that I'm going to take up this uh, assessment or uh, a feedback review for my children also. Probably I would be able to know where I would uh, uh, look into the areas that I have to uh, move forward or correct my, correct my teachers or uh, possibly what uh, would help me to move to the next level. So I thank you. Yeah, for even uh, we, have a, we have the dining hall for the students. So in the beginning of the year, we put a number of things, you know, vegetables, curry or whatever. And then we take the feedback on that as well. You know, they may give five choice and we ensure that one of them, you know, features in the menu. So they're happy with that. So they are taking a decision also on this regarding what they would like to see on the platter. So we leave it to them, certain areas. Teach them all the skills there, decision-making skills, problem-solving skills. Yeah. It's all critical things, uh, skills are all involved in that. So anyway, hats off to you, ma'am. Thank you. So very important point which Lena Ma'am highlighted over here that we have to ensure that all the skill sets which are being highlighted right now as per the 21st century have to be incorporated along with that as Sir was also highlighting this point that the cross uh, teaching methods between the subjects also I have to keep it as in mind. So this question goes to Monica Ma'am. Ma'am how do we ensure the alignment between the educational goals we have along with the assessment practices uh, which we need to follow it right now. Yes. Actually, we say uh, assessing a student means uh, there are different ways of assessing a student. It's not uh, one way. We have one conventional way. Uh, the existing uh, ways are little difficult to understand the child as a whole, as I told in the beginning. So there are uh, certain things I have jotted down from my, uh, this one, and I asked some of my friends to tell, and I gathered, and uh, here are they, uh, some alternative assessments. Okay, so they are like portfolio. We can ask students to build out, build out a portfolio that demonstrates their knowledge, what has been taught in a class or training, uh, so a portfolio should be a collection of different tasks a student has executed in the course of the class or training. Uh, if you're handling the learners in the beginning classes, you can ask them to create a paper portfolio using a notebook for advanced learners. An online portfolio is the best way. You can create a simple submission from the uh, like formats. You can pre pre uh, prepare different formats and collect, uh, make some links so that your students can easily avail, as Lena Ma'am was saying. So we have now tech savvy, so we can use technology in getting the answers. So we can prepare Google formats and we can get the answers from them. And we can also give them uh, a, a kind of um, how, how they are in different skills. Uh, then performance uh, test, not only in academics, in all other ways. Then open test. 
so that is also another way uh, assessing uh, allowing the uh, students to refer the course materials and they can take on tasks or write tests or, or and examinations now cbsc also is thinking about this open book examination so i think that is also we can start with the students just giving them some project work or uh, to some some kind of a research work and ask them to come and write so in my school also we are succeeding with this i mean they go to the library they go to their uh, different sources they gather and we give them marks uh crib sheet so I, i'm just uh, i think the time is also short uh, we can go for it you can jot down and also take home assessment alternative assessment like uh, uh, with uh, take home exercises okay and then uh, we can ask the children and the guardians to help them in that assessment and involve them also sometimes we give some assessment where, where only the parents have to do okay they have to help and they do the assessment uh, uh, assignments so we give them uh, some kind of assignments which they can do in collaboration with their family so that they also learn from them sometimes parents are also educated and they will uh, uh, most of the time so they will help them okay and they also need something to tell their children and collaborative testing this happens when you put the students in groups and get them to work together in different tasks ideally you should pair them or place the students in small groups of 3 or 4 to get the best re result from this exercise as the name suggests collaborative testing empowers the students to brainstorm together solve challenges and execute ideas at the end of the each, each brainstorming session you can ask your students to make individual submissions or submit collective res responses as a group so that they will have little more uh, what to say confidence to um, come forward because in the group maybe one child is better than the other or maybe uh, a child is better in some other subject so they feel confident when they present as a group and we can give a lot the marks to all the students so that all will feel accepted and uh, i think these are very very good uh, ideas but they are not only ideas their time has come if you really right. see open book test should be a reality today yes. because end of the day you're not interested whether they know the facts you know how how they use the facts or solve a problem so it is that time is already there whether you say i give them a textbook or they go to chat gbt they are going to find the facts and they will have to find go beyond that so yes. it's it's then time writing summaries ma'am this also yeah. helps after the lesson they write the summary yeah and then then there the teacher gives the marks to them so that the child feels confident and they uh, listen to the teacher in a very interesting way so then reports not just like that they can give the report of the teacher as well as how they have learned that particular subject so that that will also help us to develop passion for teaching for teachers man do you remember when you were younger we had one thing in english that pressy writing art yes. of pressy writing it's art. gone yes. and and end of the day the clutter and the deluge of knowledge that we have today we have to reintroduce this that allows your ability to be pithy allows you a hierarchy or a sequencing of an idea and and it allows so many skills the summary triggered that idea to me if a child has read a lesson and when he writes the summary is nothing but a pressy and then in that pressy so much so many skills get developed and and um, that is one form so what i mean to say is though we have to shed the old but we also have to bring back the best practices of old which are suddenly more relevant today um, there's, there's too much information so it helps in uh, knowledge retention also ma'am Yeah, yeah, in the classroom. Okay, when they share, they remember better. Just yeah. when they not share and just go away, I think mm. it's difficult the next day to recall. 
But when they say this, uh, summarize the thing and write or make it a story, I think that is a better way. And also reports. Reports are like summaries only. They require the student to show how well they understand key concept from class discussion. However, reports take things step further as the students need to communicate his or her knowledge in a way that presents a clear picture to whoever reads the report. So he will write a report here, even if such a person wasn't part of the class. Then next is interviews. Interviews. So pair of students asking each other the questions or uh, yeah. I'm so I'm sure uh, everybody on, on, must uh, be using some parts of what uh, Monica ma'am has suggested and some ideas must also it must have triggered some ideas also. And, and ma'am uh, regarding aligning the educational goals with assessment we have to ask ourselves all teachers should ask a question to themselves that you know whether they want to assess the students' acquisition of knowledge or the ability to apply the knowledge to new situations or both. Secondly, whether they want to assess the product that students produce or the process through which they would have gone to produce it or both. And on that base, on those bases, we can uh, you know align the goals with the assessment. So, so, so I think as a leader, you should tell them both. Yeah, <laughs> because in the process and outcome, both are very important. Exactly. Um, uh, they can there, is a, uh, there is a way like no, all the time. Uh, I mean, uh, we need to be very cautious in uh, drawing a thin, there is a lot, thin line there. I mean, we need to differentiate between, uh, I mean, uh, summative assessment, I mean, and um, just academic assessment. And uh, here children are coming and the parents are also expecting from us that they need to be academically also good. So keeping in that mind... Competency-based yes. assessment has become very relevant now. No, Why is it called competency-based assessment? Here we are testing everything. Competency is a very vast thing, vast yes. word. Yes. It encompasses... Yeah, in the, in the the all these skills. We do not lose we the essence. Courses. Yeah, so competency-based yeah, assessment right. means that, and CBSE yes. has now made it fifty percent competency-based questions in the paper. Yes, and yeah, we'll soon that, reach hundred percent. So, so uh, uh, no, even in that, see, I I really feel there is always a core knowledge. Yes, that rest, is what I mean to rest say. Rest is rest is response to that knowledge, and if that knowledge is not there, what do you respond to? Right. So my deal here is that uh, I'm coming back. I I'm, uh, I live in that world. That's why I'm coming back to it. Uh, somehow uh, the delivery of conceptual knowledge for the last 70 years of Indian education was taking almost 90% of the time of a teacher. Right. When we take uh, that away, and then reduce it to 20 minutes, deepen the ability through self-learning of strengthening those uh, concepts. We can spend all the time into developing skills in relation to the core knowledge. At this stage, though you spend 90% of time in delivering concepts, yet there are learning gaps going all the way. Uh, children do become from very bright to not um, um, so um, clear about the concepts because the basic concepts were not uh, filled at the reg reg with regular interventions. We are busy doing a lot of things around them and we compromise the core knowledge. Core knowledge is important. And whatever skills are there in are in response to core knowledge. So, so uh, uh, it's just a percentage of time delivered by the mentor in the classroom. That is what I think uh, has changed. Absolutely great, ma'am. And thank you for all the panelists. Apologies from my side that I'm going to put up on a hold. I can see a lot of questions in the chat and uh, two, three questions I am going to pose out. This is open to all the panelists. Uh, this question has been asked by Suchi Khanna. And the question is, how to space out the self-assessments and peer assessment cycle 
throughout the session in our annual pedagogical plans in middle years. So, I think this is ma'am ma should answer. Yes. <laughs> you can read the question again. Yes. So, ma'am, the question is, how to space out the self-assessments and peer assessment cycle throughout the session in our annual pedagogical plans in middle years? Okay, you said Lena or Veena? I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. I said Veena, sorry. Veena, yeah. ma'am. <laughs> you are most welcome, ma'am, to share your views yeah. here as well. <laughs> so both of us in purple, Lena and Veena, we, kept looking, we keep looking at each other. <laughs> okay. So uh, coming to self-assessment and peer assessment, uh, we don't really need to now, when we make the APP, ACPP, it's called annual uh, curricular pedagogical plan, when we make the ACPP, uh, all the school heads, we need to first divide our learning outcomes into the given months and our strategies. And, uh, you know, it basically is with why, what and how, why we do something, what we do something, how we do something. So we need to place all our learning outcomes accordingly in different spaces, domains. And uh, for each, we can like, you know, have alternate, you can do alternate, uh, the peer assessment and then self-assessment and peer which goes into their portfolios so or maybe it can be just left a lot of times what happens is assessment need not be planned also assessment does not get planned and it just happens inside the classroom during the teaching learning process we are talking about integrating assessments into the teaching learning process and not as something separate so in the app if you really want to put uh, self-learning and peer learning and divide them and space them out. I would say uh, you don't need to really plan and divide and space them out. It depends on the individuals. It depends on the class strength. It could be different for different communities. It could be different for a school in Bangalore and it could be different for a school in Nagpur. Okay. Yeah, how, much uh, of peer assessment, how much of self-assessment, how much of written assessment, it depends. It depends on what school and what community you're catering to, what kind of children okay. you're catering to. Huh. One more thing I want to add over here is that apart from that, if one needs help in these areas, you can just say that, okay, minimum you should have, say, two to three assessments, you know, by self and two to three by peer in three months time. Maximum could be uh, whatever that you have planned, but at least minimum two, minimum three in three months time. Every month you could have one each. So that guidelines you can give and then they decide. So minimum means and you need to have. Portfolios are a very open thing. It's yeah. like how, how the child feels like, how children feel like. When do they feel like talking about somebody, peer assessment, or when do they want to introspect and check on themselves because, and write about yeah, their feelings? We, we, we even have some assessments which are not graded as such. We do not grade all assessments, you know. We assess them for their knowledge. Which we don't grade at So, and so, then we could take best of the two or best of the three. And then, you know, it could be a couple of times, but you can guide them with regards to number of times, minimum one, minimum two. And then they can decide on the time, days that they would have, you know, every month, 20 days working, 25 days working. Based on that, they can space out. And it could be different for different subjects. It cannot be... One constant thing for no, all no. subjects, all concepts or any kind of content. So, so but uh, the schools that you lead, you must be putting a formula. We have a rubrics. We have observation so sheets. What we do is, yes. yeah. So these internal assessments, we leave it to the, see some freedom and space has to be given to the schools and to the teachers inside the classroom and to the children. They all need their own spaces, okay? So there are certain guidelines that we make and we share with all the schools, like centralized, but not every bit is centralized. It, it's not possible. Like I said, we have 30 you schools have to give across the region and yeah. Yes, yeah, and but yeah, at the so same time, decide, uh, at, at the same time, we have to be justified when we grade the students. We need to have the evidence. Yeah. Minimum. I always feel in assessment. I, I always feel in assessment. Like you have 52 weeks in a year. But if you take working weeks, they are 30 weeks. Yes. Yes. Yeah? And if you pick up a 30 week, 
there should be two, three threads that run evenly through the school. There could be one or two types of tests and that becomes a backbone, minimum backbone. Yes. Rest is left to the school, individual, locality, whatever they want to, because end of the day, that tool you have to get back and measure on an equal platform and whatever the uniqueness is there, you can grade it differently and add value to it. Because but if I you also don't have like... anchor base, yeah. how do you measure? I also yeah. believe that not every school will have, will have competent teachers, all of them, in fact. Yeah. So we need yeah. to handhold them and give them a structure as to, you know, these, how do they grade or how do they put, put these? So, uh, so uh, here in where your technology so, tools come in, actually come in. Yes. Because yes. you decide the framework of minimum and then flexibility or whatever. And, but because there is a technology tool, they are helped anyway. They don't have to reinvent. So, so here we are discussing only self assessment and peer assessment. Even here in we are that, discussing. even in that, because when you use a platform, you announce that you could do an activity of self assessment. There's some very simple uh, children yeah. activity when you make them sit in a circle, give them an activity, but you kind of record the basic activity wherein you take that activities video because you're observing, you're capturing observations. So when you leave it to teachers, she should have done and she marks it. You do not have a benchmarking. I, I genuinely feel on a very base level. And then you, yeah. you leave it as a, because how do you self improve and assess even your benchmarks? So, so for that matter, I was just thinking. So I believe we have got the answer. Thank you, Suchi, for asking this question. So we, Lina Ma, would you like to say something? No, no, no. I actually, you know, someone just came in. I had to say, you know, that I'm in a meeting. Okay, Sorry, no, no problem. Ma. So we are almost at the wrapping part. So just in last question, which I'll ask to all the panelists, what in one piece of advice would you like to offer to all the educators to the students who are currently in new academic year regarding student success in one liner for all the attendees who are listening to us. Okay, so shall I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, please, we'll go in the so same way. I order, would request all um, educators to be, you know, uh, to shift from a purely content focused approach to one that emphasizes student engagement, motivation, and well being. I would just say that. Sure. Thank you very much, ma'am. We'll go to Lily, ma'am. Yeah, I would add up with that, telling that appreciation and encouragement would bring out the success. Whether it be educators or students or parents, see, everyone uh, longs for it. So if you really need that success, we need to motivate them, as ma'am has already said. Uh, that Thank you very much, Lily, ma'am. Chandran, sir. Uh, dear educators and all the principals, uh, you provide an environment which is enjoyable. When they enjoy, learning will happen maximum. That is my piece of advice. Thank you. Thank you, Chandran sir. Poonam ma'am. I would al always say, like, be fearless and innovative in using technology. But here in today's forum, I would like to say, if we can develop an art of questioning in our children. And then while we actually prepare them for future. Inquiry. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Monica, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, your mic is on mute. Uh, technology is uh, just a tool. But teacher is most important. So for, a, for the success of students all around development, uh, a teacher need to be more motivated and uh, because they are there with the students in the classroom. So the teachers or the principals, we need to encourage our teachers 
um, to do this uh, assessment on basis of their all round development. Thank you, Monica, ma'am. Happy teacher, happy classroom. Happy teacher, yes. Avira, ma'am. I just would add, everybody have said the same thing. I just only want to say uh, that uh, though artificial intelligence, and we are talking about it's coming, but the teachers cannot be removed by any technology or anything. It's absolutely means I cannot believe the teacher's place can be taken by anyone. Only the thing is that we should focus on more and more practical knowledge. Like if a child is learning the mathematics for money sum, let the child take the photocopy of the money, make a market scene, let the child learn how to use. Because the main problem is with our children is that they do not know what is the, what are they going after their college education when they fall in the practical. Because classroom academics is one thing, and classroom, uh, that practical field is something different. So my request to each and everyone, that please let the child to go more and more to the practical field, use the technology, but we should know how to use it. So everything is very practical knowledge is now very important. Instead, don't make a child a bookish uh, learner and all. That is very, very, uh, no, there is no logic behind it. Even when a doctor is using a, a, only a good doctor, why he has done a good result? But when he is in the practical field to see a patient, he does not know anything. That is very difficult. For us. So let a child learn more practical things rather than bundling up the things and the quotation of it. Okay, so. Thank you very much, Amira, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am, for your words. Uh, Veena, ma'am. So my sincere advice would be all of us must remember to give freedom, freedom to children. Freedom is very important. Think of giving freedom to children to do what they want to do, how they feel like that day. And coming to freedom, uh, you know, how uh, how a child feels like when he's running on the road. Okay, we are so conscious, but a five-year-old, a six-year-old simply run on the road like as if it is his road. Mera baap ka hai. You know, that kind of freedom is what a child needs inside the classroom. Mera baap ka notebook hai, mera baap ka classroom hai. Do whatever I want to do. And with that freedom, you know, the child will belongingness. We create belongingness. The child will know I'm doing it for myself. And the child will do the best instead of forcing things on child. Freedom. Please remember freedom. Children love freedom. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. So thank you to our esteemed panelists for sharing their valuable insights today. We extend our gratitude to our engaged audience as well for their participation and contribution. I will request all the panelists to switch on their cameras. We will take a quick snap. Abira, ma'am, are you there with us? I believe uh, Extra Marks team is ready to capture multiple pictures. <laughs> Thank you very much to all the panelists. Now, I have got a lot of insights as we have shared. Freedom, fearlessness, encouragement, appreciation. Now, since we are almost at the verge of closing, uh, there are certain wealth of knowledge which I also have gained throughout this webinar, which I like to share in the form of key takeaways. The first one, which I have jotted down, embracing holistic student success which helps them with integrating personal growth at, with the following academics. Implementing fair assessments, ensuring inclusivity and accurate evaluation also brings them a different version for the kids. Fostering a culture of continuous improvement for the students to highlight as mentioning with the freedom we provide. Engaging all stakeholders for comprehensive student success discussion so that all are fo focusing on the same page. Adapting to alternative assessments and leveraging technology for enhanced learning experience and mental well-being of the students. Now, a, hum 
a humble humble request to everybody for sharing their insight sharing such a important topic and i believe all the 300 320 participants who have been listening to this conversation have gained a lot of insights and they'll be going back and sharing with their kids with their parents or with the different set of teachers which they have there so thank you very much for your time giving on a friday evening it's it was a pleasure i must say that even we have gained a lot of insights from all these esteemed panelists so thank, thank you very for much, that ma'am. thank you for inviting us thank you ma'am. thank you, you it's a great time for this opportunity thank, thank you thank you monica ma'am. all the panelists and thank you ma'am. insightful yeah, very happy to be with you thank all you looking up panelists thank you thank you ma'am. Yes, I said learning happens every second. Every second. Correct. So I am very grateful to the Extra Math Delivery Program and the whole team and all the panelists who joined with me. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And to our Abhova, I would like yes, to ma'am. say that I love the energy, uh, and and I, it makes me so happy that this is what lights the classroom. So we are always there to help you light it better. <laughs> you all are the lighthouses uh, all the panelists over here are the lighthouses to us mm. for enlightening us for sharing your time and the ideas mm. to the participants also i like to say uh, people who could attend great people who could not attend over there please stay tuned on our website which is www.extromarks.com/emelevate for the recording of this webinar and of the upcoming webinars as well we value your feedback so do share your thoughts with us additionally participants will receive a certificate of participation as a token from our side as extra marks until we meet again let's continue to strive for excellence in education and shape a brighter future for generations to come Amen. thank you <laughs> absolutely ma'am <laughs> thank you bye and it was a great session really really grateful for your time thank you very much